Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in for another episode. I got a question recently from a viewer asking me how to uh, rig the hover rig, and more specifically, their question was, how far back should the hook be from the front of the bait? So you can see right there, the hook is probably about an eighth of an inch, maybe a tad bit longer than that, behind the head of the bait. And it's a really good question, and one that I figured I would address uh, because I do think that if you're rigging it too far back, it could be leading to some problems for you. So I wanted to share with you not only how to go about rigging it and where to rig it, but also some other hover rig tips that will really help you catch more fish. Because uh, I think, as most of us know, at least if you've been using it, you've really found that it's a very productive fish catching tool. To me, it's one of the best finesse tactics that we have. And uh, I just wanted to share a couple of things with you. So the first thing, like I said, the question that I got that spurred today's video has to do with where the hook eye should come out on the bait. So this is a four inch Bass Tricks Flash Tricks. I just cut this one off my rod to show the video. Um, and it's pretty simple and straightforward. So basically the way I look at this is you want to be able to push the bait down onto that nose cone. So this is an unrigged hover rig this nose cone is really uh not only does it help lock your bait in but because there's weight that transfers to the front of the bait it helps move the bait and get the bait to glide but it acts as a great great bait keeper so for me really what you want to do is have your nose cone the tip of your nose cone coming out the front of the bait so like in this case this is a three inch berkeley pit boss this is one that uh, we've caught a pile of fish on if you see if like so after I thread it on I like to actually push the plastic down onto the cone and Hopefully you can see that the top the top of the cone is right flush with the plastic So if I pull the plastic down just a little bit, you can see the cone Let's see if I can Pop it down so you can see the top of the cone barely sticking out in my opinion you want the top of that cone to be just flush or slightly under the plastic. So in this case, you know, the, you can't see it popping through the, the top of the flash tricks here, but if I push on the tip, I can feel that cone directly underneath the plastic. So the reason I like it right there is if it's set back too far, so say I brought it back another quarter inch, that's when you end up getting a lot of your line twists, not necessarily on the action of the bait, but when you reel the bait back in. So if you set it back further, generally what happens is your bait will sit more horizontal and glide even more. It can be a very good way to generate some strikes. The problem with it, and one thing that some users have notified me of, is that they get line twists <clears throat> when using the hover rig. Well, if you set the bait back too far, if I had the eye, say, another quarter inch back, when I go to reel it in, because you have so much plastic above the hook eye, that tends to want to spin the bait on the retrieve if you're reeling at a fast pace. That's where a lot of your line twist comes in. Now, having said that, if you're looking to keep your bait even more horizontal in the water column and get more gliding motion out of it, you can set it back a little bit more and you will probably get a hair more gliding motion. And if you're generating strikes by doing that, in my opinion, it's completely worth it and then deal with a little bit of extra line twist. But if you're looking to uh, eliminate the line twist, generally it's just because you have the eye set a little bit too far back. You want the nose cone at like flush level with the top of the bait. <clears throat> so that's the first tip for you. The next one really just has to do with the weight selection. You know, this right here is a 32nd of an ounce. <clears throat> this is our size one hook. You know, the, the standard I would say for most, for, for the standard for like American bass fishing is generally to not necessarily go heavy, but a lot of people get very intimidated with going with weights less than an eighth of an ounce. Well, Personally, with respect to the hover rig, I think you're better off going with the lightest weight possible uh, before overpowering your bait. So, for example, if I wanted to take a four inch 
Kitech Shad Impact here. This is one that I love on the hover rig. If I take this 30 second of an ounce, I'll rig it for you. Uh, the 30 second of an ounce will give the bait twice as much action as say the eighth ounce one. You know, the eighth ounce is actually the best selling one that we have with core tackle. So I know for a fact, that's what most people are buying. And the eighth ounce is a great one to use. See, I just popped the top down. You can see it right there. So I'll pop that up. That's how you want to rig it. Just have the bait nice and straight, eighth of an inch, just have the nose cone right at the top and you'll be good to go. But that 30 second of an ounce will get this bait to really fall slow, have as much potential gliding motion as possible. And it gives the bait like that deadly motion. If I go with an eighth ounce one on a small slender bait like this, I'll start to get uh, a faster fall that generally leads to more spiral motion, which is good. It can generate strikes. It falls more like a tube and it falls faster. In some instances, I do want that. But from what I see, most people would just, most people choose to start with the eighth ounce. And I actually think that's probably a little heavy for most baits that people are throwing. Uh, to me, the perfect size is like the 364th ounce, uh, even down to the, the 16th ounce and the 32nd ounces. Now, keep in mind, it really comes into play with respect to what bait you're choosing. The eighth ounce on, you know, a bulkier bait, uh, will allow this bait to glide better and move better. And, you know, you put an eighth ounce in the flash tricks, it'll overpower it a little bit. Not that you can't fish it with an eighth ounce, it will just fall much faster and you don't get that hovering look in the water, which is what a lot of anglers are looking for. Remember, this technique, hover strolling, was created by putting nail weights in the bait with just a jig hook. Well, the nail weights, you're not generally going out putting an eighth ounce nail weight in a bait. You're putting a 364th ounce, a 332nd ounce, uh, you know, a, a 32nd ounce. You're talking about really light weights. So the technique itself was developed to keep your bait horizontal, kind of just suspending in the water column, nice gliding motion. Uh, and if you go too heavy, and again, an eighth ounce isn't all that heavy, but with with a smaller bait, it can be a little bit more overpowering. So my advice to you guys, I said all this to get to the point of don't be afraid to go with your lighter weights. The lighter weights really tend to get a lot more bites and keep your bait hovering up in the water column. And then the last tip for you uh, that is one of my absolute favorites. So everyone out there is like hover strolling is a forward facing sonar technique. Well, hover strolling has been around for years, long before forward-facing sonar was out there. So it 100% is a technique uh, outside of forward-facing sonar. I personally love to fish it much more like a Ned rig, where I throw it out, let the bait fall to the bottom, and um, once it gets to the bottom, the key here is give your rod tip just a quick wrist flick. And the reason that's so good is when a bait like this falls to the bottom, it'll sit on the bottom. When you flick the bait or flick the rod tip, what happens is that bait will scoot because it's a 90 degree jig head. If, if my hand is the bottom, it will scoot along the bottom versus if you were throwing a traditional jig head, the jig head comes first and it goes straight vertical. It's that quick scooting motion that gets the fish that potentially are behind your bait to react to it. And they think it's a, a bait fish scooting away in either direction. So no matter what bait you're using, if you're fishing the hover rig in a manner where you're letting it fall all the way to the bottom and you're fishing it much more like, you know, a net rig or a shaky head where you're kind of throwing it out, letting it hit the bottom, popping it a few times, let it hit the bottom, almost like a wacky rig too. Uh, when you hit it, let it hit the bottom, quick wrist flick, not big. You don't want to overpower it. A quick flick of the rod will move that bait a foot in either direction. And if there's a fish around it that did not eat it already, they will munch on it at that point. Done a lot of videos fishing it. I'll, I'll tag one at the uh, end of the video here so that you guys can go watch me fish it. Um, killer technique. Just make sure you're not rigging it too far back in the bait. Don't be afraid to go light. And when it hits the bottom, quick flick of the wrist, 
then you're going to get extra bites. Hopefully you guys found this helpful. If you did, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and stay tuned. We'll have a new video coming out tomorrow for you.